Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Popcorn and Coffee, a movie podcast. I'm your host, Jesse, and I've got with me, as always, my co-host, Chaziel. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Today, we're going to be reviewing 1988's Eight Men Out. That's what we got going on later. Um, up front, not a whole lot of of news to talk about today, so we're gonna we're gonna skip past that. But I just wanted to ask you one question: How are you today? I'm good. <laughs> Doing good. <laughs> we're gonna start this off the same way. We're gonna be like I said on the last episode. We're gonna be starting every episode off with before a movie breakdown. A nice cup of coffee. A coffee breakdown, because that's what you like to do when you watch movies. I do. Is drink coffee, and it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. tell us what our coffee is today. All right, today we've got a nice uh, Costa Rica, or Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Make sure you get close. I can't hear you. Uh, we got a nice Costa are. Rica medium here, uh, and it is from the local coffee shop, uh, The Rabbit. So, uh, that's where I get a lot of my coffees, so... Um, you said this is a Costa Rican blend. Yes. My first time trying it too. So, you know, what's interesting about this one is that it tastes just like the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Which was a what? Honduran? It was a Honduras. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. This one, I can taste a little more of the acidic, uh, flavor in it. It's got, it's a little, it's got a little more of a bite to it. Uh, it's not too bad, though. What did you say? This small, medium, large? What is this? This is medium. a medium. Costa Rica medium. What's that mean? Uh, it's just the roast is how long they roast it for. Oh. So lighter roasts tend to light. have... That's right. A light roast has more higher caffeine content because it's not roasted as long. The darker you get with the roast has less caffeine in it because they roast, they just burn it out, basically. You're burning <laughs> these. Uh, so decaf is just burnt. The, the, yeah, decaf coffee is basically burnt. Burnt beans. Uh, so you're telling me is, I own I own an island off the coast of Costa Rica. I leased it from the government. <laughs> I don't remember what that's, that's from. You don't know what that's from? I'm trying to think. What's it from? I like you. The pair of you. I I have an instinct about people. It's a gift. Oh my goodness! I'm, really? Are you kidding me? The Costa Rica coffee hasn't kicked in yet. He owns an island off the coast of Costa Rica. Isla Nublar. Oh. Oh. Isla Sorna? It's Jurassic Park 3. Well, the quote was from the first, the original oh. Jurassic Park. That's when he's talking to them in the camper at the beginning. Oh, well, you're... Okay, you know what? You started talking and you had a... Like Indian mixed with Hispanic accent, so I'm like, who is this guy? That, He's English. That was not an English accent. I that was the farthest thing. Hence, okay, I got you. No, no, All no. Right. I okay. know my way around the kitchen. I got you. <laughs> no, no, no. I know my way around the kitchen. I thought that was a pretty good. I don't think that was good. Wow. People, please go online, leave us a review, and let I us know what you easy. thought of Jesse's English easy. accent. Okay. On a scale of one to David Beckham, how good was it? <laughs> okay, so like I said up front, we're we're talking about Eight Men Out. Why don't you give a breakdown of what this movie was? The, so what we plan on doing is we're gonna in the future st- review some stuff that's coming out in theaters. Maybe the two of us go see something, and then we'll we'll come back and give our our fresh takes on that movie. And then also individually, one of us will pick a movie and. It'll be maybe one that we've seen that the other person hasn't or just one of our favorites or something from the past. We like to go back and, and review some movies that have been with us since our youth. And this week, Jehaziel got to pick Eight Men Out. Why did you pick this movie? What is this movie to you? Okay, so uh, so yeah, I picked this movie partially because I love baseball. Um, it's summertime, and uh, we actually just got done i think i mentioned the last one we coached the baseball team this year so i had watched this one shortly after uh the season ended or maybe it was in the middle of the season i can't remember but uh yeah this is one of those movies i remember watching when i was like uh i think i was maybe 13 12 or 13 i think and uh it just tell it tells the story the true story of the uh 1919 uh chicago white Sox who threw the world series um 
because their boss, Charles Comeski, was a uh, pig and did not want to pay them uh, what he promised he was going to pay them. Wow. So uh, it does, obviously, like with most movies that are based on true stories, you know, there's some liberties and fill-ins and stuff. But I think this one, uh, I think they really did a good job at keeping it pretty accurate, um, at least from the history, from what I've read of it and everything that happened that went down. Um, so, so yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. This movie was directed and written by John Sayles, who, to note, Hasn't really done much else. Uh, uh, that's very that's very big. Yeah, this was his probably done, biggest yeah. film. His biggest film in late, the late eighties. Um, got an all star cast. It's rated PG, which is pretty standard for for movies like this that come out in the eighties. And it's it's clean for the most part. There's yeah. not much in it. There's some language, but that's that's about it. Uh, but it's got an all star cast for its time, coming from John Cusack. Clifton James, uh, let's see here, Bill Irwin, and Michael Rooker's in there. John Mahoney. Yeah, David Strahan, Strahan. Charlie Sheen. Charlie Sheen's a big one, even though he doesn't play a very big role in this movie, no. really. Well, him and John Cusack, this they were up-and-coming actors at this point. They were not big names. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Uh, you got Christopher Lloyd. He doesn't play a very... Nobody plays a very big role in this movie, though. Like, it's an all-star cast of people that we know who weren't as well-known yet. When did the first Back to the Future come out? Well, Lloyd was pretty famous at that point. He had was been it? on TV shows, and... Yeah, Back to the Future had been out for the first one, like, a few... Almost a decade at that point. Uh, I think the first one came out in, like, 83 or something. I mean, John Cusack's pretty big at this point. He'd done quite a bit before this. 16 Candles, One Crazy Summer... Hot Pursuit, Stand By Me. Uh, he'd done quite a bit. And his young, he's still young. He hasn't gone on to do, like, he did say anything a year after this, which is a pretty big deal. Um, then later in the 90s is really where he kicked off with movies that we know him for. But he's a pretty big deal. I remember reading something about this movie uh, early on that was talking about the, the director not wanting to cast Michael Rooker because he was an unknown. Yeah. And he wanted an all-star cast of people who who were known. So these guys that he picked, he picked them because he wanted known actors as opposed to nobodies. But Michael Rooker fought for his role. He probably plays one of the biggest roles in the movie, at least at the, the first third. Yeah. And kills it. I love Michael Rooker. I think he's a really good actor for the roles that he chooses to do. Um... Did you already break down the plot? Yeah. I kind of talked to you. Yeah. Go, 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 go deeper. Go deeper. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a semi-fictional account of the scandal surrounding the 1919 World Series coined the Black Sox scandal. Uh, is presented the Chicago White Sox considered the cream of the crop and one of the best major league teams ever just won the American League pennant and are odds on favor to win the World Series against the Reds while team owner Charles... A. Kameski publicly crows about the superior superiority of the team he has assembled, especially in cohesion and players' determination to win, is matched only by their feeling of unappreciation by Kameski, especially financially, as he screws them over time and time again on promises made. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Go ahead, go into whatever you want. Uh like you said, it was rated PG. Did you say the release date and stuff of it? Nineteen eighty eight, yeah. Okay. Uh it had a budget of six million. It only grossed five and a half million, so it did not do good in the box office. I uh, wonder why, folks. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know. It has a runtime of two hours. Yeah, the uh, John Sailors, the director, also starred in it as well. He played the one reporter. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. So the one that was kind of keeping track of the players during the series to see how they were playing, like what their batting averages were and trying to find the... Okay, so let me ask you this. The story of these gentlemen 
Are these the same characters that come out for the first time in Field of Dreams? Yeah, there are a few of them. Uh, Shoeless Joe Jackson. Well, yeah, is definitely a big mean, one. That's Ray Liotta. He's a pretty big role um, in that movie. But those guys, because there's like literally eight that come out the first time in Field of Dreams. Yeah. Is that supposed to be these guys who didn't get to play baseball anymore? So they're coming all, out to play baseball again. Yeah, a lot of them were. Okay. Because Field of Dreams was just, I mean, towards the end of it, it was just anybody who got kind of like their baseball career got messed up because Ended of whatever one reason. reason or another, yeah. yeah, but the, I think the original. Like the doctor and the. Yeah, the original eight of them that came out were from the 1919 White Sox. So are these uh, guys hailed as heroes? No. Because I don't, a gripe that I have with this movie is that it doesn't necessarily paint these guys in a negative light. And Field of Dreams doesn't paint them in a negative light either. No, so Shoeless Joe Jackson is kind of, he's probably the biggest ball player that is banned from the Hall of Fame, Major League Baseball Hall of Fame, and was banned from baseball forever. Because of this. Yeah, and people loved him. Like, at the time when they were playing, I mean, Chicago, like, People in the city love these, yeah, guys. Like especially in that time, yeah, in the early 1900s. Oh yeah, baseball, baseball was, was king. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, baseball was king at that time. So, and America loved like that was America's sport. Yeah, um, it's not anymore. No, I don't think it's it not. Is. Football is, if anything, football is kind of taking that role. Even, I don't think any sport really captures a country like baseball did in the early 1900s yeah. for America. But yeah, and I think I think though, like I think when everything came out. Originally, they were kind of looked at, down upon by Chicago, by the world, by them, by America and stuff. I think over time, as people started thinking about it and seeing what happened, they're like, okay, not all of these guys that were on this team yeah. were doing this like we're actually cheating. They may have signed their name to it, but then they ended up not even yeah, throwing it. Like, like, shoe, like Shoeless Joe Jackson. Or Buck, or Buck Weaver, Buck Weaver, yeah, uh, who tried to get his name exonerated yeah. for the rest of his life, yeah. But uh, and it's like Jack. I mean, you can and honestly, if you go back and look at their stats that they had in the series, Sheila's Joe and Buck Weaver's stats they were they weren't like outstanding, but they weren't anything that was like, oh yeah, you definitely threw this. You definitely were not trying. Well, that's one issue I had with the movie. It was like watching them play these games where they're intentionally throwing it, it was, like, blatantly bad. And I don't know if that's just because it's in a movie and they have to accentuate some of these things Mm -hmm. or if that's actually what it looked like while watching them play. But I'm like, these guys are playing like our eight- and nine-year-olds on our team where it's just like they get the ball and they're like, I don't know what to do with the ball. And I'm just like, you're the highest caliber team in the league. Yeah. And you're making these mistakes that make you look really, really dumb. Like, or was there more nuance? Was there more subtlety to it mm-hmm. as opposed to just like dumbfoundedness? Yeah. Because I feel like if they played the way the movie portrayed them, every would have known, everyone would have known they're like, oh, these guys are doing this on purpose because there's no way they could be that bad. Yeah. Well, then that's the thing. Like, we'll, we'll never know because there was never any footage. They didn't film games at that time, they didn't have the ability yeah. to. But, um, Yeah, they. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, obviously, there's a dramatization of it. So, oh, definitely. Uh, but you feel you feel bad for like the guys like Shoeless Joe, who he's he was illiterate. He seriously couldn't read or write or anything. Okay, and they coerced him into. And I understand. I feel bad, and I don't feel bad because, and it's like the commissioner put it at the end. I think even he realized that some of these men weren't intentionally trying to throw the game, but they didn't speak up to anything either, which makes them just as guilty as everybody else, in my opinion. Buck Weaver, would it have tarnished that season? Yes, but guess what? That guy would have been able to keep playing baseball for the rest of his life if he would have been up and like, no, this is immoral, this is bad, you guys shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. So yes, I agree, him and Shula Show they weren't robbing the bank, but they were sitting in the car while the bank was being robbed and then later were saying, I had nothing to do with this. Mm -hmm. They're just as guilty in my book. But again, the movie didn't portray them as guilty of anything, truly. 
no harm, no foul at the end, outside of the fact that none of them ever got to play baseball again. Right. That's like they were, they would have gone to prison. Like, the, yeah. If they, their confessions that they signed and then they came up missing, you know, yeah. they all would have been in prison. So yeah. they got away with. Which is the people involved loving these players enough to be like, no, we're not going to convict them of anything, even if they are guilty. Yeah. And it's that lower class trying to attack the upper class, which again, I get. If they're robbing them of their money, they're just, they're wrong. They're too, you know. If that owner didn't want to pay his guys for the caliber of players that they were, which was shown by the pitcher. What was his name? The older guy. Uh, David Stratham. Yeah. He was the one that was like, look, you said you'd give me a bonus if I did this. I did this, and now you're not going to pay me. That He was the only one that looked shafted by the team. Yeah. And everybody else just wanted to make some side cash because they didn't think they were getting paid enough. But he was like, out of spite then, okay, you want to do that to me? I'm going to do this to you. Yeah. But he and was the only one where they... That they portrayed looked it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Portrayed and it they, that way. I mean, it was a well known at that time, Charles because Komeski was like the worst owner in baseball. Nobody wanted to play for him. Like he was he was just a dirtbag. So it's known. You don't I don't think that I don't think that all needs to be, be portrayed with every player showing something that happened to them. But uh yeah, that that scene when they after they win the pennant and they all go down there. And so, they, they were supposed to get a bonus, and they all go yeah. down to the, the clubhouse, and they open the bottle. They're like bottles of champagne, and they're like, "So wh- when are we getting our bonus?" And then he's like, "This is your bonus," which never happened. No, that didn't happen. No, and I was looking up facts yeah. on the side. It was over dramatized for the movie's sake, making the same point that he sucked at his job. But that specific thing, yeah, never happened. Yeah, it was an interesting movie. It's of its time. Um, I think, and I enjoyed it, but I think the movie would have benefited from unknown actors as opposed to mainstream actors. Um, it pulled me out of it, especially like, oh, you got Charlie Sheen in here who was really at, at his height at this time, you know, late eighties, early nineties stuff, thinking young guns, thinking all these different movies. He's a decent actor, Mm -hmm. but they gave him nothing to do. Why hire A-list actors when it's not really about any one of them specifically and how well they can act is really irrelevant. You know what I mean? You only hire them because you're trying to get butts and seats by having John Cusack, by having Charlie Sheen. That's the only reason you're yeah. hiring these guys. I know the guy who played Shoeless Joe. I know I've seen him in stuff. Sweeney? Yeah. Yeah. But it was a few of those guys that I really enjoyed watching because... I wasn't distracted by their personas as an actor in the role. You know, even Michael Rooker, who's known for his big bombastic roles that he plays. I didn't see Michael Rooker there. I just saw that character, you know, mm-hmm. but I saw John Cusack the whole time and I'm just like, okay, John, where's Joan? She's in here somewhere. You guys go everywhere together. And I think it was disserviced in as much as I don't think it necessarily knew what kind of movie it wanted to be. Was it a baseball movie or was it a courtroom drama? You know, the first half's baseball, the second half's courtroom drama. The movie is about their story as a whole, but I think if they'd have stuck with one or the other and then highlight it with, like if they'd have stuck with and made the premise of the movie the courtroom Mm -hmm. and then highlighted that with scenes of baseball, highlighted that with the story of that specific season, I think the movie would have benefited from that or done that season, made it a baseball movie and highlighted it with a courtroom, a scandal. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like it was two different movies and about halfway through, it just stopped one and started the other Mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. There was, there was a, there was a evident, switch in the film you can tell like, oh, yeah. as soon as the baseball's oh, yeah. over it's like okay now we're it's like a drop off on it was almost a drop off in the film yeah and uh, there was no more baseball yeah at all at that point yeah i agree and the other thing i didn't like was at the end shoeless joe goes and plays minor league ball she did which he did and john cusack's there and they're like is that who i think it is at least 
kind of hillbilly people mm-hmm. they're like, is that who I think it is? And they're like, no, nah, it can't be. And John Cusack comes in. He's sitting there. Whose face is plastered everywhere just as much as Shoeless Joe's is. These guys aren't unknown people in yeah. history. Yeah, but at that time, they didn't have... You got to think, though. They had cameras. Yeah, but... They not, had newspapers. You're they right, had, they did. But they were not... They weren't. It's not like they were all over like they are today. It was, you don't, they knew who they were. No, they didn't. they were arguing about the fact, was this him or was this not him? So they knew who he was. They knew who he was, but for them to confirm that he was who he was... It was a lot harder than, do you know how many of those ball players would play on a team and then they'd go and play somewhere else? Like, I mean, I get that. But I guess I'm just more hinting at the fact that John Cusack's sitting there, Buck Weaver, and he's like, no, nah, that ain't him. Those guys don't do that anymore. It was only like four years ago. It wasn't decades later. It was a short amount of time that like, I, I, yeah, but I don't think you understand. <laughs> I don't think you're understanding how they didn't have. Okay, four years at that point. It's not like someone could go on their phone or go online and look up and be, or even go to a library somewhere and be like. So how did Buck track him down and find that game if he's not even using his real name anymore? It didn't playing say, in the minor league. It didn't say where they were played at, like where he was playing at. But I'm saying you're saying. It's not that easy to find people or to recognize people. And yet, for some reason, John Cusack's character can track down specifically where Shoeless Joe is playing at, even though he's under an alias and okay, not even we don't by know. the same they, name. That was probably dramatization. We don't know that that character, <laughs> with that Buck Weaver, actually even did that. And I doubt that he did. I'm saying for the movie, <laughs> that's why to me it didn't work. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're making my point for me. It's irrelevant. It's not bad. It isn't bad. I'm not trying to crap on it just to crap on it. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a fine movie. It is a fine movie. It's just a movie, though. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I did, there was nothing for me to take away from it. I, except I learned something new about baseball. A little bit. Yeah. You know, outside of that. But it's like, yeah. Go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. What else? I mean, what else? yeah, no, it's not like, I'm not saying this is like the, this isn't even probably in the top, top 15 baseball movies of all time. I wouldn't put it in there. Are there even 15 baseball movies? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just one I just really enjoyed and stuff. I don't, it's, yeah. I watch it probably every year and a half to two years. I'll put it on or something. So, Definitely more for casual viewing. A um, couple things I took away from it. They accentuated the national anthem, which I thought was awesome. America, yay. But a big thing I was thinking about the entire movie, specifically the first half when it's baseball, not the courtroom drama. How did those guys keep all that chew in their mouths and not swallow it? I, <laughs> so much chew. How is that even comfortable? Just the biggest wad of chew in their mouths. Trying to run, trying to do, trying to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's real because you can see photos of like back then. Oh, yeah. They're always chewing. It's just it's, ridiculous. When they were allowed to, they can't do that no more. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, I think it's illegal for them to have tobacco in the dugouts. Too messy? I, it's more of an image thing. They don't want to, Major League Baseball doesn't want to promote that so they an image thing baseball has an awful image you know why because every replay i watch of modern day baseball is just a play happening everybody being mad at the ump for the call of the play that's not true everyone storming the field managers storming the field getting in the ump's face that's managers getting thrown out of the game and that's baseball. that has literally been baseball for the last 150 years i think that's dumb that's why it's the greatest sport ever it's not a great sport at all uh anymore just overpaid people who think they're all the greatest thing to ever walk the earth maybe that does go back all the way to the beginning anyway no no, because they weren't overpaid years ago true (laughs) they're definitely overpaid now Uh always complaining it was it's a different game now there's a there was a switch probably back in the there's been two bait two major baseball switches one was after 1919 it was a big switch, the way the game was played. Yeah. And then the second one was probably, probably 2000, 
probably in the 90s with the steroid era and stuff. Oh, yeah. So that had yeah. big tarnish there. Sammy Sosa. Sammy, baby. But um, anyways, back to the movie. Uh, soundtrack's fun. You got that. I, I like the soundtrack to it. There's it's some got, good stuff in there, yeah. It's got that 1920s sound. It's music. a great era. It's, yeah. I love that era. Really hard to mess up. Uh, yeah, the way songs were like written back then, like they were singing, like the one guy, the the director, he plays the one reporter. He when he's walking around, when he when they finally know that, okay, yeah, these guys are cheating, and he's like walking around singing, "I'm forever blowing ball game." Oh, I know, yeah, I'm which like, was what's that, Bill Irwin? I think. No, it was it was a reporter, not a player. Yeah. I know, like, right to their faces, and they're like, nah, and they're all super cocky the whole yeah, time. They're I'm just like, laughing about it. Everyone knows you guys are cheating, because yeah. <laughs> you're not subtle about it at all. <laughs> That's what I can't understand, and again, I just think it was a poor depiction on the movie's part that, like, and maybe this is real, but if it's real, that makes everyone really ignorant to what was going on. One game, they can't make a catch, they can't throw a ball, they can't do anything. And then the next game, they're like, no, we're going to win this one. And they just play perfectly and yeah. just skunk whoever they're playing. And then the next game, uh, can't do anything. Can't even tie my shoes. Drooling all over themselves. And then the next game, they're like, no, we're going to win this one. And they're just perfect at everything. It'd be, yeah, I've never actually gone back and looked at the stats. But, I mean, you could, I guess if you looked at their errors and stuff, if yeah. they went back well, and that's you what actually you'd have looked to do, at I guess, them, yeah. be like, okay, yeah, they actually did play this bad, this game. Uh, but how is you as the person who's watched them all season, that whatever that manager's name was, not look at them and just be like, some... And I think the movie did depict that he was catching on to something yeah. later on when he's like subbing players out. And they're like, why? Why are you subbing me out? What have I done wrong? And they're like, uh, everything. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess, how do you prove it and all of that? And then the guy threatening to kill the guy's wife and all of that. I'm like, is this for the movie or is it? But even if it's just for the movie, I don't think it worked. It didn't cause tension in the no. movie at all. No, and and I don't know if he was th that, if that was true or not. I feel I think I don't ever remember hearing that. Like someone was threat. Like they were actually going to go ahead and try to win it, and then he was threatened, like basically with murder. Yeah, it's like I don't. I think that they actually just threw the series and was just like, yeah, no, we're, yeah, we're going to throw it. We want our money. And then, but you know, I, you don't know how much of it's dramatized or not. He, I don't disagree with that. But at the same time, if you're making a movie and you're trying to dramatize it to make it, to add tension and to make it at least an interesting story, every true story in a movie is loosely based on something that actually happened. Right. There's no movies out there that it's like 100%. This is exactly the way that it happened because a lot of times the way things go down in real life is boring compared to the drama that you can add to it in a movie and you got to add little details. But if you're adding details, at least make it good. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you're going to add a subplot of murder... Go the distance with it. Don't yeah. just throw it in there loosely. That kind of thing. That's what bothered me. But to me, the the flaw the movie had was that it didn't know what kind of movie it wanted to be. Did it want to be a baseball movie? Did it want to be a scandal movie? Did it want it to be a courtroom movie? Because I saw all the pieces, but none of those pieces blended together at mm -hmm. any point. And like you said, you can see where it distinctly shifts in tone from one to the next to the next. So it doesn't accomplish any of them very well. Yeah. And I think we've seen, I'm trying to think of like, we've seen modern movies that are based around like that courtroom type drama that also has the real life, like what the story of what happened. And then you've got the courtroom aspect. Yeah. Of it. We've seen modern movies. I think the, uh, uh, the one about Ted Bundy with Zac Efron, uh, Oh, yeah. Uh, Incredibly. Evil, despicably something. Yeah. I know that what one. You're talking about. I think that one did a pretty good job at that. Like, it was a courtroom drama. And then yeah. you got the flashbacks of yes. what ha what yes. was going on and stuff. Um, it's just about formatting. Yeah. And it's about layout of the, the movie as a whole. Yeah. You know? 
I think if they would have stuck with one and then interspersed it with elements of the other, adding elements to make it a baseball movie, adding plays, you know, I look at movies like like Moneyball is a perfect example of that movie is about behind the scenes baseball. Mm -hmm. So how much you see of them actually playing baseball? Very little. Is very minimal. But that's 100% a baseball movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? But watching it, it isn't. Right. Not in as much as like, remember the Titans is a football movie. You're watching things happen on the field in football. The drama is not only in what's going on off the, going on off the field, it's what's going on on the field mm -hmm. between the players. So many movies about baseball are actually not about the game of baseball at all, though. Even like Moneyball or Trouble with the Curve or Field, Field of, of Dreams. Dreams. That movie's barely a baseball movie. They barely actually have baseball in it. And not James Earl Jones in his apartment somewhere. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's a good movie. I'm not I'm not taking it away from it, but baseball's all about what's going on behind the scenes. So make it about what's going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But I did read that this movie took eleven years to make. Yeah. So I think for a long time they didn't know what they wanted this movie to truly be. And to me, that just shows when you were watching it. And yeah, the director said originally he wanted to, he was going to play a side character as one of the ball players, just like kind of on the bench and stuff. Then by the time they actually filmed the film movie, he got, he was like, I'm too old. I can't, I couldn't convincingly be. So that's why he changed him to be one of the reporters. Yeah. Uh, See this. Uh, and again, I'm looking at it through 2021 eyes, but a story like that fits like an eight-part miniseries. Eight-part courtroom drama miniseries with flashbacks to the past. That would be awesome. I think that would be really cool and really tense. It. And more about these guys not knowing what their future is going to look like based off the verdict. So they're turning on each other. You know, they're ratting each other out. But they're all, so everybody knows, okay, yeah, you all did this. They all signed confessions yeah. that they cheated. You think they weren't ratting on each other? They were. Yeah. They were. And then still everyone literally brushes it under the rug and says, nah, you guys are good. Like a little <laughs> wink and a nod, and they just go about their day. If it wasn't for a commissioner who was like, no, we're actually going to have standards in baseball, those guys would have just kept playing like nothing had ever happened. Oh, well, yeah. Well, that's how the game was played, though. That's just that's just what it was. That's what sports was. You didn't have they didn't have uh uh you didn't have agents, you didn't have lawyers and stuff that like made sure everything was you had all the owners ran the league. It was like this we all get to get meet, you know, a couple times a year, make the rules, this is what we all agree on, and then that was it. It's crazy. It was a it was not a gentleman's game. <laughs> no. Yeah. I didn't. And a lot of people that. But if it's going to be throat, throat coat, if it's going to be cutthroat, make it a cutthroat movie. Like, because the movie didn't convey that either very well. Yeah. Just that, like, at the end of the day, everybody's in it for themselves, trying to get, trying to provide for their families, trying to live in an era when it's, it's kind of difficult to live in. And you're playing a sport as opposed to actually, like, working in a factory or getting a job, yeah. you know? Well, you look at, like, the. Michael Rooker's character, Chick Gandel, that, the way he portrayed that player, and, you know, I don't know how the other people's personalities were. I've read that Buck Weaver was a little more of a rougher guy than what John Cusack yeah, portrayed him. Not so clean. <laughs> that's how baseball players were. You had less guys that were clean cut and polished, and more of them, most of them were just, they couldn't do anything else, so they just played ball. They were just rough gritty and they weren't nice people <laughs> yeah. yeah uh i'm sorry all i keep thinking about is this car that's somewhere in the distance and i can hear their music where like is that car it's probably my neighbor's house because he does that yeah that is no car that's no car it's my neighbor that's no moon <laughs> it's a space station it's so loud sometimes his music over there that, like, if I'm laying in bed, my pillow will shake. Jeez. And they'll call the neighbors, will call the cops and ask him to go turn this music, and he'll never turn his music down. 
Can you hear that? I can. Yeah, I can hear oh, it. Oh, I hope that gets cut out. Guys, I'm sorry. It is what it is at this point. And if you guys hear this sick beat in the background, but man, that's frustrating. Ah, people, you got to love them, you know? I'm Buck Weston. Anyway. You're going to say I'm Buck Weaver. <laughs> <laughs> no. If I hear the name Buck, my mind goes straight to kicking and screaming. Going to have to get past old Uncle Bucky on this one. <laughs> I love that movie. Uh, what else we got? Uh, cinematography. We didn't really talk about that. Again, it's not... It looks like... I mean, it looks like it's in the 1920s. It looks like the era. The yeah. one thing that did stick out, which I thought was cool, and they accentuated it, was back in that time where when they got all their outs, players would just leave their gloves at their position, yeah. which is so weird. I know. And they eventually had to... Like, make a rule against leaving your glove on the field because it was impeding the ball. Like, why would you not do that then? But then they were just like, whatever. And they just threw their glove yeah. down. That's crazy to me. It's funny. Uh, there was something about the field. It has, because they filmed some of it, I think you said at Indianapolis. Yeah. And then some of it was in Chicago. Yeah. But the baseball fields now, they have the, they have the dirt, like about 15, 20 feet at the back, like fence, the warning track area. And so that field they were playing at had that. That didn't come around to like the 1940s or oh, something. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I think players, the other thing was they had, some of the players had their fingers sticking out of the gloves, the backs of the gloves. Pe- people didn't start doing that till like the 60s. Oh, really? Like just because the way the gloves were designed. Uh, well, I did like, they did, they had the one scene where th- they threw the pitcher a new ball. And they, they had a discussion about this is the new way they're going to start lacing up baseballs. And he's like, I can throw this ball so oh, yeah. much faster than the old ball. And she's like, yeah, but you're also cheating. So like right now you're not trying to even throw hard. So <laughs> That was the other thing that bothered me about this movie was there was numerous times where they had conversations with their wives mm-hmm. or significant others. And not a single one of their wives was like, why did you agree to this? <laughs> why did you agree to cheat at the game that you love? You know what I mean? There was never any conflict off the field. Like, all their wives were just like, yeah, stick him to him, Johnny. Like, they were just completely on board. And I get it. Apparently, everyone back then was just in it for the money. But not everyone was in it for the money. Some of them played baseball because they absolutely love to play baseball, you know? Right. But yet, none of, no one was ever like, you're an idiot. Why did you agree to this? I can't wrap my head around that. <laughs> and it's just a matter of they, did, they chose for the movie not to go that direction. Yeah. But to add tension, why wouldn't you, you know? It's just funny. Oh, here's something interesting. So John Sayles said he felt the film was cursed because in the first 11 years it took to get the film made, Orion Pictures turned it down twice and family members of the players portrayed sued. Like, that's why it took so long to make it because they were fighting lawsuits. From the family members. Uh, again, the family members, maybe I'm wrong about the wives thing. Maybe all the wives and children and everybody thought that they were completely justified in what they did. We got to think, because this is... Okay, so they started started the ball rolling to get it made in the early 80s. A lot of these family members, like kids, they weren't far removed from that. No. That was still a pretty big thing. Yeah. But, like, you, your husbands who chose to do this are dirtbags. Like, legitimately, you're choosing to cheat at the game for a profit on yourselves. Like, that's a a crummy thing to do from as a person. That's You're you're no better than somebody who's robbing a bank. Yeah. As a criminal standpoint. So it's just like, why are they being painted in such a positive light? I understand they felt like they were shafted. Yeah. Guess what? Who doesn't? doesn't matter what field you're in, what sport you're playing, or what job you have. We all feel like we deserve more than what we're getting. That doesn't mean I can rob my... I'm not Robin Hood. I can't go just steal from the owner of the company I work for because I feel like I'm not getting paid my dues. And that's what they did. And yet no one's like, yeah, you know what? They were wrong. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny, though, how much this incident in history and baseball history affected the rest of time because now you have... After they uh, assigned the commissioner 
and finally get a commissioner to oversee the league, he institutes like, hey, any betting yeah. basically or anything, yeah. and you will be banned. Yeah. And we look then, go like 40, 50 years later to Pete Rose in the 70s where he was betting on baseball as a manager. They banned him from the game. He can't really? Come, yeah, he can't. Pete Rose can't play. He's banned from the Hall of Fame. He'll never get in. Good. Uh, Football needs to do this. I'm talking uh, to you, Belichick. Sorry, it's that, a, was that's pers- a, that was all personal. That's a, that's a little different because what they're what I'm talking about is more financial. Well, I like get he's financially that, gaining but from it's it. It's a character thing. Outside of just the money, if you're willing to compromise that, it should at least taint your record in as much as Hall of Fame, those type of things. I don't want to get into this conversation right now. This is about baseball, not about our personal beliefs, about specific Patriots. Okay, I'm just saying. But to me, the character is the same. And, and I don't care if you're the crappiest player on the team, but if you have a character and you give it 100%, that's worth 10 times as much as the guy who's willing to compromise anything just to win. Yeah. Or to get ahead in life. Struck a chord there, didn't I? Huh? <laughs> I struck a chord there, didn't I? <laughs> Well, I mean, I, we, you already know, we're polarized on this, but. but. Yeah, I mean, people are now, like, a lot of people are trying to get Pete Rose kind of exonerated from that because he never betted against himself. He was just well, placing bets. Okay. Like, he never, and he never lost a game on purpose. Like, he ne- was never betting against his team. That just, they know of. Well, That I they mean, can prove. That they can prove, but I don't know. How many petitions have you signed? Personally, I haven't signed any. I mean, <laughs> I think he should be allowed to get in, but that's it. Doesn't matter. It's here, neither here nor there. It really, truly isn't here or there, or there. So, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, talking about this movie and how much I enjoyed it or didn't enjoy it, because I did enjoy it. It was the type of movie where I was doing other things while I was watching it as well. To sit and just watch it, it's a slug of a movie. Like it moves. It's slow at a it's- slow pace. And it's constantly changing its tone throughout. But it's sparking this dialogue that we're having right now about this movie. That's what I care about. And that's what I love about this movie. We're able to sit here and talk for the last almost hour about this movie. That's incredible to me. Yeah. You know, I can do that with any movie, even garbage movies. And by no means do I think that this is a garbage movie. I just think it failed in accomplishing what it was set out to accomplish. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I mean... I agree. Uh, He, I mean, this was uh, the director's probably most prominent film he's done. So it at least gave him some something he can hang his hat up at the end of the day and say, "Good job." Uh, I mean, it barely made its money back, but yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure in VHS, DVD, Blu-ray sales, it's it's gone up a little bit. It's not a complete tarnish on Orion Pictures Uh, production company. (laughs) Is Orion still around? I have no idea. Would you recommend this movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd recommend it. Um, I mean, like I said, it's one of my favorite baseball movies, even though I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't put it in the top 15 greatest <laughs> ones, but I enjoy it. Uh, I know that sounds weird. Hey, you know what? That's so not. No, there is a difference. I can enjoy something personally and also say that I understand it's not great and it's not phenomenal, but I enjoy it personally. But yes, I would recommend this movie. Yeah, I would recommend it too. Um, if you're looking for a a better <laughs> baseball movie, anyways, where was I? Uh, what was I saying? Oh, baseball movies. Yeah. If you're looking for something with tension, that's a little bit better of a drama. You you got Brad Pitt and Moneyball. That's a much better baseball movie. Um, it accomplishes, and it's not because it was made in the last ten years. It isn't. It just tells a better story. Yeah, no, I agree. It shows a, the, the same amount of baseball as that did, maybe less. But if you're looking for something throwback, you like the era, the Newsies kept coming to my mind watching this because it's that throwback, just kind of... 1920s. Yeah. yeah. If you like the aesthetic, if you like the, the clothes they used to wear, then this is probably a fun a fun little jump for you to go watch. Um, so I would recommend it on that. But if you're looking for, hey, I want to watch a baseball movie tonight, I want to watch a good baseball movie tonight, as you stated, there's probably 15 others that are a little bit better than this that you could go watch. Anything else you want to say on that note? No, I got nothing else. Nothing else to say? Nope. Nothing else to say. No, oh, gotta... the other thing I would say, like, another movie that came to my mind was uh, 
League of Their Own. I think that's a better baseball movie than this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it's actually about baseball. Yeah. If you want to get a hold of us in any way, you can look on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It's all at Popcorn and Coffee, a movie podcast. You can find us there. Um, right now, if you want to get through, get a hold of us through email, it's still at rememberthatmovie at gmail.com. Remember that one, the number one, movie at gmail.com. You can get a hold of us through email there if you want to send us a little bit longer of a note. Uh, where else? Yeah, I'll just uh, go on to iTunes and leave us a review. It will help us get more uh, followers, and each review will then push us up in the charts, hopefully, and we can more people will see us. Uh, up, up, up. The yeah. sky is the limit. Yes. Uh, recommend us to family, friends. Um, yeah, just we, we'd like to get this thing going and rolling. If you If you enjoy what we're doing and want to continue to hear more content, we need we need to get people listening. Yeah, we'd like to have have a decent little following to justify us sitting here and talking to each other and recording it, yep. as opposed to just doing it at my dinner table. But uh, pay it forward, as Haley Joe Osmond would say, and tell somebody about us. Yep. So thanks for listening, guys. Bye. Have a good one. <laughs>